Hallo und welcome to another Zuzin session. So today is, I don't remember what day today, I think today is Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, it must be Wednesday. Uh, let's just actually check it out, it must be Wednesday. So that means today, according to this schedule, we continue developing our own programming language. How about that? Isn't that exciting? Instead of actually, you know, uh, flaming on the internet, uh, what language is the best one? We're just creating our own one. Fuck all of the languages. We're just gonna create our own one. So, um, so we already started that doing that some time ago. And what we're doing essentially, we're uh, taking our uh, basically like a backend infrastructure called BM, which is essentially like a uh, virtual machine, a stack-based virtual machine with its own bytecode and instruction set. And we're implementing uh, an imperative programming language on top of that uh, virtual machine. So uh, I'm going to put the link to this entire thing into the description. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you can read about it in here. So and on the previous uh, session, I almost said the stream, but this is practically um, a coding session. On the previous session, we actually implemented uh, a better uh, tokenizer, right? So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, YouTube. You know precisely what I need. Uh, <laughs> you know precisely. <laughs> yes, so uh, here we implemented a better tokenizer, uh, which actually tracks precisely rows and columns so we can have a better uh, compilation errors and today <clears throat> we're going to be integrating this tokenizer into our into our parser and uh, by the end of the stream maybe not by the end of the stream but at least by the uh, half of the half of the session we will have a better compilation errors based on the new uh, tokenization uh, on the new tokenization okay uh, tokenizer string session. Uh, I need to actually train myself to actually say uh, session instead of stream because it's not really a stream, it's just a coding session. Uh, coding a session. Uh, so, and if you don't know what is a tokenizer, um, Google it up. Seriously, just fucking Google it up. It's that easy. Let me show you. Uh, tokenizer. Here it is. And specifically, we're talking about uh, lexical analysis, right? So, so here, here, what it is. If at any point something is unclear, just Google that. It's that easy. It's that fucking easy. Google is an amazing tool. Trust me, I use it every day. People ask me, Zosin, how did you learn programming? Google. Just fucking Google. Yeah. Just every time I had a question about anything, it's just like put it in Google and it just tell me and that's how I gained all my knowledge. I really recommend it. Better than any boot camps, universities, all that bullshit, just Google. Just Google. Just... Anyway, so, sorry. I think I had too much coffee today. Uh, so, yeah. What we need to do in here is we need to start integrating our tokenizer into our parser. So, the, the language right now uh, looks like this. Right, so it cannot do anything but uh, have an entry point and print uh, hello world, right? So that's the only thing it can do. Uh, so let's actually see how it works. Uh, so let me try to recompile everything. Let me bootstrap my build tool. No build, no build.c. There we go. And uh, this is going to be something like, uh, I think I can just rebuild specifically bank compiler. A specifically bank compiler and let me see if I can easily run it. So uh, yeah, yeah, by the way, thank you to Jian for um, submitting a pull request that actually lets me uh, build a specific tool in here instead of rebuilding all of the tools. Thank you so much. <laughs> this, this pull request was really helpful. Uh, we, we still rebuild the whole library in here, but yeah, so um, we're using our custom build tool, by the way. We're using our custom build tool. And uh, one of the problems with this build tool is that it cannot uh, basically ignore some of the things that needs to uh, be built 
uh, if they're not modified, like Makefile, right? So Makefile actually look at the, at the at the resources or at the targets that it needs to rebuild, and if the uh, targets were not modified, it does not rebuild them. We don't have something similar for this building tool, so it does not really support incremental compilation. But I'm thinking uh, about the solution for for that specific tool. And if you're interested in uh, like to learn more about this specific tool, um, I'm gonna give you the link in the description. It's an experimental build tool where you write build recipes in C not in a separate scripting language not any other existing scripting language none of that stuff uh, you write building recipes in C that's what you're doing all right so uh, custom build tool and of course this thing is an experimental so for more information about this building tool read the description I put everything there um so let's uh continue let's continue and <clears throat> yeah uh, so i rebuilt the compiler and let's try to compile this example so i'm gonna just run it like this it's gonna be a uh, build uh tool chain bang and i'm gonna provide the example hello bang and as far as i know it successfully compiled this entire thing into the bytecode here is the bytecode and if i run this entire thing with our emulator right with our emulator uh it will not work because uh it didn't we didn't build the the tool the specific tool that needs to be <laughs> built to run this entire stuff okay let's actually uh, build bme and uh now if we try to run it there we go we printed hello bang four times right so and as you can see uh we have uh, precisely four hello bangs in here right so that's basically the tool so uh let's go to the main uh topic of today's uh, session basically integrating the lexer that we implemented on the previous stream you can find the link to the previous stream in here right previous session so we implemented that on the previous session and integrate all of that into the uh language itself okay let's integrate all of that so right now how does it go we are um accepting the flags right we are parsing the flags uh and stuff like that reading the input file uh, as a string then we tokenize the string with the legacy tokenizer and then we parse um the stream of tokens into ast and then we traverse the ast um generating the uh, virtual machine bytecode that's what we're doing so one of the things i want to do now is basically replace this legacy tokenizer with our new brand new tokenizer so the brand new tokenizer is in fact called bang lexa right it's a bang lexer and i'm going to start my refactoring with replacing this thing with bang lexa uh, and let's call it just Lexa, right? So that will break the program, right? Because this particular function does not expect, uh, well, we don't even have such variable anymore, right? But it doesn't expect bank Lexer, it expects um, a tokenizer. And that will generate a chain of compilation errors. And what we'll have to do, we'll have to follow these compilation errors and fix them. And that way we're going to basically refactor the code to use new tokenizer so i call this technique a compiler assisted refactoring right so essentially you make the main change that you want to make right so basically it's like the root change or the seed change and then following the chain of compilation errors you're fixing them and basically refactoring your entire code base to use something new so yeah um this technique i call it compiler assisted refactoring or as some people call it uh car <laughs> compiler assisted refactoring um so yeah <clears throat> actually uh hmm. yeah everything's all right okay so let's actually try to recompile this entire thing and uh see how it's gonna go uh two, 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 two. so i'm rebuilding bang so obviously it's not going to compile it's 100 percent not going to compile okay so this is not how you create the lexer the bang lexer uh so what we're going to do in here we'll have to have our own constructor right so uh let's actually replace the constructor like this 
So what we have to provide in here, we have to provide the content, right? Here's the content. And we also have to provide the file path. Do we even have a file path? We do have input file path, right? And that, that's probably what we need to do in here. Okay, next one. Next compilation error, please. Uh, so this one is not correct. Uh, so that means we need to change this function to accept bang uh, lexa. And this is going to be the lexa. So, oh yeah, this one is interesting. So a legacy tokenizer has a pretty useful function called expect token next. Essentially what it does, it accepts the token type, uh, right? It accepts the token type that you expect, uh, asserts that this is the next token Right, it assures that this is the next token. And if it's not the next token, it throws an error and crashes everything, right? So that way you can just quickly check is like, for example, if you start parsing a procedure, right? If you start parsing the procedure, um, right? First thing that you would expect in a procedure is a proc keyword. And that's precisely what we're doing in here. So expect token proc, right? And then uh, what we expect, we expect a token name. And then uh, what we expect, we ex expect open parentheses. And since we don't we didn't implement parsing the comment, like arguments of the functions, we expect closing parentheses, right? And then we parse the body. So that's basically how it works. But that is a legacy tokenizer. This is a completely legacy tokenizer. We need to implement a similar function for the bang lexa, right? So let's see how can we implement that. So I'm going to go into the bang lexa. Uh, eh, eh, bang lexer and uh, let's put it somewhere here right so bang lexer expect token we're going to provide the state of the bang lexer and uh, probably bang token type that you expect uh, sometimes we may want to expect um, keywords Right, because uh, on the previous stream, we made the decision that we're not going to have special token types for, for, for the keywords. So we're going to parse uh, keywords as names, right? We're going to parse them as names and then assert their contents um, if we expect a specific uh, a keyword. So this is not going to work with this function, right? Because now we cannot just say expect proc because proc is not a token type. So I think what we're gonna do in here, I think what we're gonna do in here, we're also gonna have a special function called expect token, um, expect keyword. That's right, expect keyword. is gonna ex accept the state of the Alexa. And instead of the token type, it's gonna accept the name, uh, right? The name of the keyword. So essentially what it's gonna do, it's gonna take the next token, right? assert that that token has a type name and then look at the contents of that um, token and uh, compare it to this, uh, this value. So we're going to have separate function to assert like token type and the keyword because all of the keywords are names essentially. So I think that's how we're going to approach that. So one single function is not going to be enough for us, unfortunately. Okay, let's go to the bang lexer.c and let's implement all of that. Uh, so it's going to be lexa type. This one is going to be void uh, lexa type. And I'm going to just do a cert uh, saying that this thing is not implemented yet. Right. I wish there was like, I don't know, maybe we need to have some sort of like a snippet that expands uh, automatically to something like this. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how to create such snippet. Is not implemented yet. And I'm going to put this thing in here and we're going to say expect keyword is not implemented yet. So uh, then I'm going to go in here and <clears throat> essentially I'm and what's cool is that I don't even have to provide the dummy location anymore. You see, so if you watch the first stream where I started to implement this um, 
this language you would notice that i would create these like dummy file locations just to put them in here because they didn't make sense in the context of this language so already at the first stream it was obvious uh, the complete the complete misfit of this tokenizer right it was uh, completely obvious and we need our own tokenizer so now in this particular case we don't even need to provide this file location because like it doesn't make any sense in the context of the language because location is within the tokenizer anyway all right so here what we're doing we're expecting a token proc but in our case it's a keyword Right, so let's actually put it in here, uh, expect keyword, we provide the pointer to the lexer, and the keyword that we're expecting in here is going to be called proc. That's the keyword we are expecting here. All right, so then, oh, interestingly enough, okay, so we take the next token, right, we take the next token, uh, and we are extracting, mm -mm -mm. oh, expect the token also returns the token. Okay, let's actually also do that. Bang uh, token. Yeah, it, it does make sense. I mean, if you assert that a particular token exists, you might might as well also want to, you know, get that token for further analysis. So that, in fact, makes sense to me. So let's actually return them real quick. Bang token. There we go. There we go. Cool. So, and in here, I'm going to do, uh, so this is, we expect a keyword. Now we're going to uh, expect a token, a specific token type, expect token, providing the lexer. And the type we're expecting is bang token type um, name. We don't have to provide dummy and we extract the text out of that token. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, um, <laughs> so we are having this thing like that and then bang alexa expect talking uh-huh open parent and close parent so this one is going to be bang it's a bang talking open close uh parent there we go and after that, I'm passing the lexer in here. I think I refactored this entire thing properly. Hopefully. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. So I'm doing top down. So I didn't implement these functions yet, right? So I'm just, you know, uh, outlining what kind of functions I will need. And once everything sort of refactored, I can go back to these functions and implement them. All right. So this is how we're going to work today. Uh, now, let's try to recompile and see uh, the other places where all of that fails. We, we don't have a type in here, it's actually a name. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, Tokenator is actually Lexa. Sure. Anything else, Mr. Compiler? Okay. Uh, bank token uh, kind. Oh, it's not a kind, it's, it's actually type. I don't know why I decided to call it type. Because usually for this kind of thing in, like, I usually call them kind. You know why? Because in the context of programming language, type usually means a very specific thing, like type of a variable, right? And uh, because of that, these kind of notions, they collide and make a lot of confusion. Do I mean type as like the type of, of a variable type of the expression no 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 it's like different kinds of the of the tokens so maybe because of that i need to i will need to make another refactoring in here super quick and just to replace this entire thing with kind and this entire thing with kind that will actually create another chain of compilation errors that we'll have to follow we'll have to follow two uh, chains of compilation errors simultaneously that was never done before and i'm doing that live that's right <laughs> following not just one but two chains of the compilation errors uh okay how many how many chains of the compilation errors i can handle i don't know watch this video until the end to find out uh, okay so this is going to be talking uh kind kind uh maybe i'm gonna just straight up replace type with kind like everywhere in well yeah and it's not a particularly great idea but somewhere here uh, yeah you have to be super careful because there's also type dev thingy uh, but apart from that everything looks okay good <sighs> all right so this is inside of the c file let's do the same replacement in here so this is going to be kind um, this is going to be kind as well 
thank you, kind type. Okay, so we have that. That was hard. Okay. Do we have anything else, uh, Mr. Compiler? Okay, so here is another one. And I probably want to do a similar thing in here. Uh, not really. Okay. Let's go to the next compilation errors. Uh, all right. So I think I, yeah, I managed to handle two chains of compilation errors pretty successfully. Uh, so what do we have in here? So we, we have to accept Bank Lexer, Bank Lexer and Alexa. And let's see what we're going to have in here. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Okay. So here we are expecting uh, a specific token open curly. All right. Bang Lexa expect token. Uh, bang token open curly. That should be fine. Uh, I might as well remove this thing right away. We don't need dummy anymore. And let's see what else do we have in here. Okay, so here we are parsing uh, a sequence of statements inside of the block. Right, that's what we're doing. If we take a look at the example in here, right, so we're parsing this block, and the block consists of a sequence of the statements separated by a semicolon. And that's exactly what we're doing in here. That's why we have a while loop. So basically, while we have any statements, we keep parsing them. We keep parsing them. And here is an interesting thing uh, we're doing a look ahead. So to do this kind of thing, we need to be able to actually look uh, one token further. Uh, without removing that token from the tokenizer, right? And we don't have that implemented yet. That exists in the legacy tokenizer, but it doesn't exist in our own tokenizer. And you know what that means? Let's actually create a, a dummy function that is not implemented yet, and we're gonna implement that a little bit later. Right, so we have um, bang lexer next. Uh, where is the, yeah, bang lexer next. Uh, maybe I, I want to move these things like closer to here because they kind of, you know, they kind of fit together. Um, all right. So, and in here, I'm going to do something like uh, pick, right? It's actually very similar to next. Um, it does pretty much like do, it does the same thing, almost pretty, uh, pretty much the same thing, except removing the token from the tokenizer. So essentially, you can pick as many times you want, uh, but if you do next, uh, you won't be able to see that token anymore. I guess it makes sense, uh, hopefully. All right, so let's actually put this thing in here and uh, let's uh, basically assert saying that this thing is not implemented yet. Bang Alexer uh, pick. All right, we're gonna we're gonna pick into that flexor, uh, and then we're gonna have a name in here, not name, but rather a token. Uh, rather a token. There we go. Uh, all right. So what else do we have in here? Um, bang Alexa pick. Uh, I'm gonna provide the Alexa. We don't have to provide the dummy location, and this token has to be a bank token. All right. So what else do we have in here? Mm -hmm. So if kind not equal token, uh -huh. bang token close curly, right? Uh, anything else we need in here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Lexa. Oh, okay. This one is very interesting. All right. So this is a function from a legacy code and it can only work with the legacy tokenizer. Right, 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 right. Oh boy. So that basically means that we'll have to implement our own version of this function that can work with the new Lexa. Right. So how are we going to call this function? We're going to call it something like static. Uh, I don't know what kind of type it should return, probably some sort of like a bang expression. We don't have that type yet, uh, but we're gonna, we'll are gonna we have to introduce that thing. Uh, parse uh, bang um, expression, I suppose. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Parse bang expression. Uh, we're gonna provide the arena, right? So this is gonna be arena. And uh, we're also gonna provide the bang Alexa. Right, bang Alexa. And uh, let's assert that this thing is not implemented yet, and we'll have to go through all of this thing and implement them a little bit later. So it's going to be false uh, to do parse bang expression is not implemented 
uh, yet, of course. And in here, uh, we're going to be doing something like uh, expression parse uh, bang expression. And there we go. Bagging. <laughs> okay. Uh, I keep actually misp misspelling it to bagging instead of bang. Bang, bang, motherfucker. All right. So uh, let me see. Let me see what we got. So we don't have a bang expression, as already mentioned. Uh, maybe it makes sense to create such thing, uh, bang expression. Since we don't we don't have parsing implemented yet, I'm going to keep it like empty. And I suppose the way this thing is going to be used is going to be used instead of this expression, right? I, I guess it does make sense. I guess it does make sense. Okay, next compilation error, please. All right, so um, type dev struct has no members. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, I remember this kind of stuff. Like in uh, standard C, you're not allowed to have empty structures in a standard C. Um, I remember talking about it with Jia, and she said that it's probably due to one of the rules that uh, you can't uh, basically to prevent the situation when you have like an array uh, of a particular size but because the size of the structure is zero the size of the array is going to be zero despite you putting some sort of number in here and that sort of breaks everything right so I, I guess that's why so maybe we're going to put something like uh, something here like I don't know uvu uh, okay mm. All right, so what do we have in here? Um, and so, and uh, 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 we expect the next token. We expect the next token, and this is going to be a lexer. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, bang lexer um, expect specific token and we're expecting bang token kind semicolon all right and uh, in here we're gonna have something like a bang lexer expect uh, token lexer uh, bang kind close I don't know why I'm like alternating between close and closing it's just like I don't know. <laughs> probably because I don't speak English so I don't know the difference between them um, okay, so we don't need a dummy in here, right? We don't need a dummy in here. Uh, okay, so, and we don't need a dummy in here either, because we don't use it anywhere. All right, so, <clears throat> oh, now we are, okay, we're done integrating this kind of stuff into the, um, into the parser. Now, uh, we're having a problem with the compiler, right? Uh, because in the AST, we had to replace uh, one type with another one, and that created another third chain of compilation errors. And this chain already not related to the tokenization. It's related already to a different type um, that basically has only uvu in it, right? So it doesn't have anything else. Uh, so, and yeah, this is the third chain of compilation errors. Uh, Welcome to the software development world, everyone. Cheers. Mm. Alrighty. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So, um, I suppose this is because this function should accept bang expression instead of like regular expression, the legacy expression. All right. Um, so here, oh, okay. So expression has to have a kind all right so let's actually introduce that so it's going to be bang expression kind right and again it is needed to separate it from expression type which could also be a thing in the future that's why we have this kind of thing all right so uh we're gonna have this kind of stuff and this thing does not exist of course so let's actually quickly define it right uh and what kind of what kind of kinds, what sort of kinds do we expect in here? What sort of kinds? Uh, I think we expect specifically two in here, all right? It's uh, a function call, maybe. Uh, I don't see them. I don't, where are they? Here they are. So we expect uh, string literal, 
and function call. We don't implement anything else and yeah, you can see another case of a misfit of the code, right? Uh, well, it's not true necessarily. Well, but it's kind of true for the binding because the notion of the binding um, is not particularly applicable in, the, in this language yet. Uh, but yeah, so it's kind of like a really rough around the edges. So we definitely needed like a special, special expression and special code for, for this language. Um, all right, so we need only lead string and function calls. Uh, can I just quickly copy paste this kind of thing? By the way, is there any way to actually append things into the clipboard of Emacs? Because you know what I want to do now? I want to copy paste this thing and then append this thing to the current kill buffer, if you know what I mean. Um, so I, it would be actually super convenient. Uh, let me see, Emacs append to clipboard. I know that in Emacs it's called kill buffers, but I'm still not really used to the terminology of this thing. Append to kill, uh, kill ring. Uh, uh -huh. Oh. Uh, that's very interesting. So if I do something like this and then I go down and I do something like this. Um, if the next command is kill, it will append. Okay. Oh shit, it, it worked. That's precisely what I wanted actually. So yeah, I want to be able to just go around uh, the source code, select different random things and append them into the same clipboard. Like just append them, just collect them and then I can go to a different place, dump them all and just process them. So that's what I will always want to do. But that requires like an additional step. So if you press Control M W, it waits for the next command and only then it will append it, which is like two key strokes, which is not particularly convenient. And I don't really like that. This is by proceeding a cut or copy command um, okay, well, it's kind of annoying, but I guess it makes the job done. Um, this also happens if you use uh, successive. Uh, oh, okay, let me let me try to do that. So what if I, okay, so we have that and essentially I start this entire thing and then I'm starting copying particular lines and then boom, uh, that didn't work. Uh, uh, this also happens automatically if you use successive cut copy commands without anything in between. But that didn't work for me. Okay, I'm gonna try this uh, one last time. Oh, maybe. Uh huh. Oh, because I didn't have a successive commands, right? To actually select a different thing, I had to perform other commands like going down, and that's why it was not a particularly successive command. That's why it didn't work. Um, all right, uh, very well then. So I, I can I can leave with that, I suppose, and then I want to go back in here and just dump both of these things and uh, uh yeah well i guess it kind of works i just wish it was a little bit easier right i think it was just like a single um a single keystroke that you could use and just quickly jump around collect these things you want you to collect and then go to a different place dump them and process them as i did like here it will be way more convenient maybe i need to research how to do that uh and uh so it's gonna be something like bang and there we go uh, also as far as i know um, there is another way right because a kill ring forms like some sort of a queue and you can access them by prefixing things with uh, control one or control two so for instance i can copy paste this then i can copy paste this and then i can paste control one and then control two and yeah so essentially i have a queue um but it's not particularly convenient because if i have a lot of things like if i have 10 of them i have to like reach like very far in my keyboard so <laughs> yeah uh all right um mm -hmm. 
I, I think I'm gonna actually add it to the description because I you know, used this and I found it useful. So I'm gonna credit it in the description. So this one is gonna be uh, append uh, to kill ring. Uh, welcome to modern YouTube, by the way. So <clears throat> um, let me see, let me see. Mm -hmm. I mean, my channel is not monetized, so I don't think it matters that much. So <laughs> uh, it's not monetized anyway, so who fucking cares? Uh, all right, so let's try to recompile this entire thing. Mm, all right, so here, aha. Uh -huh. So an expression also has a, has to have a value uh, with the field as lead str and some other things. Okay, that makes sense, I think. Uh, that makes sense. And what I'm thinking is that maybe I can still reuse some of the IST. No, 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 no. I decided to actually um, keep the uh, IST separate uh, between the, uh, the two languages, right? So let's actually do something like bang expression value. And this one is going to be just a value. Uh, and this one is going to be a union, uh, right? Bang expression value, right? And in here, uh, right, we're going to have uh, as uh, string um, as lit str, and I guess that's it. I guess that is it. Anything else, Mr. Compiler? Okay, and we also need to have as phone call as phone call. Okay, bang uh, fan call as fan call. There we go. Uh, and now this one is going to be a structure, All right? Bang fan call, All right? And in a fan call, um, let's see what need, what's needed in a fan call. Uh, in a Oh, you, you can you can actually have this kind of thing. Okay, let's put a void there. Uh, we need a name. Uh, first of all, also fan call for some reason has to be uh, a pointer in here, and I'm not really sure why. Um, so it doesn't really make much sense. I think I'm gonna keep it as a as a value. Um, all right. So and we need to have a name in here, right? So this one is gonna be a name, and probably also something for the uh, phone call arguments, right? So we need to have phone call arguments. So this one is gonna be just a name. All right. Anything else? Okay. All right. So uh, incompatible uh, expression as phone call. Aha. Uh -huh. And here is another function that we'll need to implement. We have a special function that asserts the arity of the function. And if you don't know what is arity of the function, just Google. I can Google it for you, sure. Uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, Arity of the function is the amount of arguments uh, of the function, believe it or not. <laughs> it's just a fancy term to describe how many arguments a function has. Uh, th that's it, seriously. Uh, there's nothing much to it. And so tell me, could have just could have you just Google it yourself? Of course you could. So Google is amazing. Trust me. Google is a goddamn amazing. Uh, so arity, there we go. Um, <clears throat> also, I think maybe I should add lexical analysis to uh, uh, to the description because why not? Tokenization, mm -hmm. right? Here it is. So lexical analysis. All right. So uh, we need a function that basically accepts a fan call and asserts its um, arity. And we definitely need this function to be our own function because we don't need this dummy thing uh, accepted. So, uh, yeah. So let's actually implement this function super quick. Super quick. So it's going to be static uh, void bang fun call assert arity. We're going to accept fan call uh, and it's going to be fan call and then we're going to accept the arity. Right. And then here is going to be void fun uh, call uh, arity, and then it's going to be assert false 
uh, bang phone call expect arity is not implemented is not implemented there we go there we go okay anything else uh yeah bang phone call expect arity and probably this thing doesn't need done bang bang okay so this one is not a pointer anymore and now this thing expects arguments okay all right so for now we're gonna keep arguments as a linked list uh, so we're gonna do bang fun call arg and it's gonna be a pointer to the arguments right so um, yeah let's keep it like this hmm. so but we don't have such thing so let's put it this way bang fun call arguments is basically a bang expression right and plus a pointer to the next thing. Uh, it's going to be something like this since it's a linked list. And because it's a self referential structure, we'll have to maybe make it like this and just put it like that. And it's going to be type def, uh, something like this, something like this. And there we go. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be semicolon. Mm -hmm bang expression unknown type really really oh is th this is because i actually okay it has to be um get them bruh maybe i have to put it somewhere here but uh c get them c get them c what are you doing to me c yeah, and now we have this kind of situation. But but for that one, we can actually type dev this thing uh, to bang fun call uh, arg uh, to just bang fun call arg. Eh, eh. Okay. Another chatter bait donation. Mm. Okay. Thank you, kind sir um so what else do we have in here okay so now everything seems to be okay uh has no member ah it's not okay okay uh and we need to find the argument and instead of expression in the argument we have to call it value that's what we have to call it that's right uh and what's the next one okay so we don't have these things anymore so we can just actually replace all of that with uh, something else so this should be called unreachable right uh, because we handle all of these things and if you accidentally have a value that is not one of these things you hit the unreachable state so and this is precisely what we want to do in here so it's going to be compiler maybe something like uh, unreachable unreachable there we go i kind of want to rename it to compile not begin but bang brain come on come on brain uh, compile bang expression into basm bang bang all right anything else anything else uh okay compile bang expression into basm mm, all right uh enumeration not handled aha uh -huh. that's true bang uh, bang anything else anything else you've got to say and with any dummy um i'm still handling compilation errors uh okay so we have this thing bang um What's interesting is that the beauty of this compiler assisted refactoring is that sometimes I don't even need to understand the code, right? I know that I renamed a particular function and it fails uh, with unknown function. I don't even need to look for the context or understand what these arguments are and what is this function. I don't need to understand that. The only thing I know is that I renamed compile expert into compile bang expert and that's what I need to replace it here with. And as you can see, um, yeah, after like mindlessly following this process, I actually refactored everything and everything compiles. So uh, this entire thing does not depend on the tokenizer anymore. So if I remove it from like includes, I think it will still compile.
it still compiles it probably won't work because there's a bunch of asserts like photo do's and stuff like that but i already decoupled the code from legacy tokenizer and attached it to the new tokenizer i already did that and it compiles it type checks it works that's the beauty of statically typed compiled languages can your dynamic type uh, compiler language programming language <laughs> can it do that huh i didn't think so mm. yeah static typing enables pretty sick workflows actually it enables pretty sick workflows not gonna lie uh, <clears throat> um all right <sighs> so um let me see okay well, we managed to recompile this entire thing and let's try to run <clears throat> the bank um so it's gonna be tool chain uh no no not tools but build uh tool chain bang <clears throat> excuse me example uh hello bang all right so as you can see we already hit an assertion so and what i'm gonna do now i i guess i'm gonna just keep recompiling and running this program and if i hit an assertion i'm gonna just implement the function right uh, until i implemented all of these things so yet again i can now mindlessly follow the process and at the end maybe we're gonna come up with something actually working that's pretty cool isn't it i think it's pretty cool uh, <clears throat> so, but before we do that, I want to make a small break and make a cup of tea and, uh, yeah. Cool. So, uh, what we need to do is to implement, uh, bang lexer expect, uh, keyword. Let's quickly do that. So essentially what this thing has to do, it has to expect a token of a particular type, right? So, uh, any keyword. Uh, has a kind uh, name, right? So we have to provide a lexer, uh, and the kind we expect is a bang token kind uh, name. There we go. And that will return us the token in here. So um, if the kind is different, this function should automatically crash for us, right? If it didn't crash, that we know for sure that it is a name, right? And then here we can assert the following thing. If the name, uh, I think it has to be text, right? Uh, SV equal uh, name actually not equal. We have to uh, crash. How are we going to crash? We're going to print uh, an error to standard error output. Um, so we know the location of the token. If we take a look at the lexer.h, inside of the token, right, uh, actually bang, bang token, come on, here it is, we have a bang location. And bang location uh, consists of the file path, row, and column. Uh, and it also has a special formatting uh, for printf uh, macros. So this is how we're going to use them. We're going to do bang. Uh, lock uh, FMT, then we're going to say error, mm. and we're going to say something like um, p -p 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 expected keyword, uh, and let's put it like this uh, keyword SVFMT, but got uh, something else, right? SVFMT, uh, yeah, something like this. Bang lock arg uh, we're going to extract the location of the token so it's going to be lock right and then we need to get the name that we expected we expected uh this name and then um actually it has to be arg and then what we got was a token text there we go and after that we're going to actually crash right so that's how it's going to be implemented right that's precisely how it's going to be implemented otherwise if we didn't crash we're going to just return the token there we go so let's see if this entire thing compiles so right now uh we don't have a special compilation thing let's add special compilation thing it's going to be tools bang and let's do this all right and we hit another assertion because this function is implemented in terms of this one so we actually went a little bit further and we hit this assertion but you know what's interesting is that we can already probably try to uh, trigger a compilation error within our compiler by uh, replacing this thing with something else right so the only uh, way you can get into this assertion if you actually got the proc keyword no it's not true 
Yeah, it's not true. So you cannot get the actual proc until you finish this fun. Okay, so we need to implement it first. I was thinking that maybe we can trigger the uh, compiler error by changing this thing, but we cannot until we implemented that. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, so we need to first implement this thing. So what we need to do in here, we need to uh, query the next token from the lexer, right? So uh, bang lexer next, uh, actually this is the next line, so this is basically what we need to do in here, right? Uh, so we provide the lexer, right, and we provide the pointer to the token, right? We need to allocate that token on the stack, we're going to zero initialize it just in case, all right, and if uh, that token um, if the lexer is empty, um, we're gonna throw an error, All right? We're gonna throw an error. But since we don't have any alternative token, so since we reached the end of the lexer, uh, the only thing we can say, we can say expected token this, but got uh, end of file, I suppose. Maybe we can just say expected token this without anything else, right? Expected token this, but got nothing. Um, I don't know, it, it just depends. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. std error and uh, we're gonna have bang log fmt uh, error expected token uh, and let's provide this token in here. Um, so, 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 token that uh, and that's gonna be it actually, I think. Bang token kind uh, name right bank token kind name and uh, i'm gonna just provide the kind uh, and after that also we also need to provide location bang log arc uh, and the location is going to be to be fair do we have a location yeah well, location is located within the token but we didn't get any token maybe uh, we can get the location from the lexer itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the lexer has a function, um, yeah, which takes its current location. Maybe that's precisely what we can do in here. I think so. I think that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, just just, just use that. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But reached the end of the file. Yeah, let's put it this way. Uh, and a file lock, right? And this is going to be something like this, right? End of file lock, and uh, I'm going to just provide uh, end of file lock, and then after that we're going to simply uh, do something like this, right? So we're going to crash. All right. So after this entire thing, we know that we've got a token, and we need to assert its kind. If token kind not equal expected kind. Uh, maybe because of that, it makes sense to rename this to expected kind, right? Uh, and this one is going to be expected kind. And if it's not equal to expected kind, we need to throw an error yet again. So it's going to be fprintf. This is not how we spell it. fprintf. std error. Bang. Lock. Fmt. Eh, Emacs. Error. Um, expected token. Uh, s. But got. S, right, so something like this. Then I'm gonna have bang, bang, lock, arg, uh, token uh, location, right? Here's the token location. Then uh, we're gonna take bang, token, kind, name, token, kind, actually expected token, right? Expected. Uh, and I just realized that I also need to put expected in here. Yeah just realized that okay expected kind and um, mm, the last one is going to be bang token kind name token kind like the actual kind right there we go and after that i'm going to just exit with one there we go and if we um passed all both of these checks uh we're going to simply return the token that we've got there we go spread yourself forward right so, and if you expect a specific keyword, there's at least three checks. You check that you didn't read the end of the file, you check that you have expected token kind, and then you check that it's equal to a specific value, uh, the, the, the name of the keyword. All right, so we need to have at least these three checks. Okay, let's see if it's gonna work or not. So it's not even, com it does not even compile because why? 
Uh, expected something, something. Don't, ah, yeah, semicolon. Sure. Anything else? Okay, so we reached another error, another assertion here. Uh, so now we're trying to pick, right? So we're actually trying to parse something, which is actually kind of cool, I think. So we actually went so far because peak is inside of like a parser thingy. Yeah. Yeah, this is inside of the parser. We already like integrated the tokenizer and we're just like doing the parsing. All right. So um, what I want to do now, I want to go to the source code and try to trigger the actual compilation error in our language. Right. So it will say that it expects proc, but now let's actually change it to something else. And I want to see how the compilation error will look like. All right. Yeah, there we go. That's what we got. So it actually precisely uh, found the place and it says expected keyword proc, but got pro, right? And uh, the location is gonna be actually tracked precisely. I can even like, change things around and it will precisely tell us the location of that token. Yeah, as you can see, it's like five, five, right? And yeah, it knows precisely where it is and it can change these things around and it's gonna hit assertion yet again. Cool, all right, this is precisely what I wanted. Yes, high quality error messages, finally. Uh, and we're not only reporting like a line, we're also reporting uh, a column, right? So we know precisely on the level of tokens where a fucky wacky and oopsie doopsie has happened. Ooh. All right, so let's actually go here and see what uh, needs to be done in here. Hmm, what needs to be done? Mm -mm. So we need a pick. Pick essentially does the next, but without removing uh, the token. Um, so I usually implement this kind of thing uh, in the following way. Mm -mm. In the following way. Uh, so I'm going to go in here and that means we need to extend uh, our Lexa, right? We need to extend our Lexa. So now it should store a peak uh, buffer. There we go. So it has a peak buffer. Uh, and also an indication that the peak buffer is full. So basically you have something in that peak buffer. So the peak buffer right now consists of a single token, right? It consists of a single token. Uh, and we don't really need more than that, right? We don't need even more than that. Mm. So, and essentially uh, we're gonna use this flag to indicate whether you have something in the peak token. And if this flag is set, the uh, lexer next uh, should return uh, should return something from the peak buffer and set it to false, right? And set it to false, um, which is rather interesting, which kind of means that the whole implementation of extracting the token has to be moved into the peak, right? It has to be moved into the peak. Uh, also, we have all the functions in here, which are purely internal. So something like next line is an internal function. Oh, by the way, we're implementing peak right now. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. This is a to-do that I forgot to, uh, forgot to report and now I'm implementing it. Perfect, I can just remove it now. So I have a couple of functions here which are purely internal and I kind of exposed them and I didn't think why I did that. So let's actually quickly uh, go and uh, make them internal ones. So this next line, I don't think it has to be uh, visible to the user of the library. Lock is useful outside of this thing. Speed token, actually purely internal one. So let's actually remove it from here. A bang is name, yeah, I think uh, also has to be internal one, right? And it will simplify the interface of this entire thing. Now our tokenizer just consists of like constructor, the way to get the its current location and like expecting token picking and so on and so forth. Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> So I think the way we're gonna implement peak right now is uh, I'm going to rename bang lexa uh, next uh, to peak and this one to next right. So now peak is responsible for all of this entire stuff. Um, <clears throat> 
so this one so we have like different phases in here so hard coded tokens name token uh, string literals um, and this one is basically uh, un unknown token right if you reach this place you reach the unknown token this one is uh, basically <clears throat> it's basically checking for the next token um, retrieving uh, extracting maybe extracting next token right and we're gonna have a special uh, function here uh, basically check uh, pick buffer right so in here if the uh, peak buffer is full right if peak buffer is full uh, we're going to simply do the following thing uh, we're gonna take the the token from the peak buffer right and return true essentially right <clears throat> uh -huh, uh -huh. so yeah we're picking and um peak buffer is full we're returning the big peak buffer and we just return true and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it if it's not full if it's not full um i suppose what we have to do in here what we have to do in here is modify speed token i think function speed token should actually populate the peak buffer automatically yeah i think it should do that it's, it would be actually super convenient yeah, 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 yeah it should populate peak buffer automatically okay so let me let me see so uh what are we doing here all right all right all right so we create the token Mm. And another interesting thing, I think you can only allow to speed if the Lexer peak uh, buffer is not full, right? It's not full, uh, and only then you can actually do that. So then we take the token, we populate everything in here, we return the token, and on top of that, we should set the Lexer uh, peak uh, buffer to that token right so we're doing that and then uh, we said that the peak buffer is full right peak buffer is full essentially the next time you call peak it will detect that the peak buffer is full and it's gonna just return the the cached uh, the cached token so that's how it's gonna work so and now um, if we take a look at the next next is gonna be the following thing uh, right, if Lexer has something in a peak buffer, the peak buffer is full, it is going to return a value from that peak buffer, right, and set peak buffer to be false, right, um, and set peak buffer to be false. Mm, otherwise, it should try to peak something. It should try to pick something. Mm. Mm. Maybe there is a better way to do that. Maybe there is a better way to do that. Always try to pick, right? Lexer pick, Lexer token. Uh, and of course, if uh, you couldn't pick this entire thing, right, you couldn't pick this entire thing, automatically just return false without trying to do anything. Okay, so you're trying to pick uh, and you return this entire thing and then I'm going to do lexer pick buffer uh, full uh, false and this one is going to be just true. Right, so essentially next always picks returns you whatever is in the peak buffer and automatically uh freeze the peak buffer okay that makes sense that makes sense i think i think i think i think and of course if there's nothing in the peak buffer it will just return false and it will just jam itself all right let me see if uh it is working and it is not even compiling so this has to be called bang buffer bang uh, all right, so this one is a lexer, not lexet. 
Uh, it has to be called Lexer. And what do we have in here? Lexer peak, no previous prototype. Are you serious? Uh, are you serious? Okay, let me see. Alexa peak. I don't have Alexa peak in here because I probably... Uh, I probably accidentally removed it, uh, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I don't remember. All right, and now we're trying to parse in expression. Yeah. We're trying to parse in expression. And what kind of expressions we can have? We can only have uh, string literals and function calls. That is right. That is right. And this is where Luca hat is going to be extremely useful, right? It's going to be extremely useful because uh, we'll just look into the next token, right? We'll look into the next token. Uh, and depending on that next token, we're going to dispatch the different parsers, right? We're going to dispatch the different parsers. All right. So uh, let me see what we can do in here. Um, so. Uh, Everything seems to be compiling and uh, uh, queue. Okay, so this is going to be bang token, uh, token, low token, uh, zero initialized, and I'm doing bang token pick. Right, I'm providing the lexer, I'm providing the pointer to the token, and if this entire thing is not uh, available, that's it, we reached the end of the file. Uh, so we need to print an error saying something like std error bang lock fmt error um, um, expected expression but got uh, end of the file there we go so that's the error we have in here so and um, we need to get the location of the lexer at the end of the file so it's going to be something like bang uh, lock uh, end of file location, uh, bang lexer lock, lexer. There we go. So we've got the location, and let's actually report it. Bang uh, log arg, end of file lock. There we go, and we're gonna exit with one, uh, indicating that uh, something went wrong. Now, depending on the kind of the token. Uh, we'll have to do different things in here. All right, so uh, so let's actually switch upon the token kind and what kind of kind of kinds we can have. Sort of kinds. What sort of kinds we can have? Um, let me see. So it's going to be something like this. Um, we have a lot of these things. All right. So and the only expressions right now that uh, we can parse they start with name and string literal right no other expression right now starts with these uh these tokens okay so let's go here somewhere and i'm gonna go like down in here one more time um, let's query replace comma with a colon and uh maybe also i'm gonna quickly put the case in front of these things there we go so we have a case uh and uh, Okay, so maybe here um, I'm gonna do something, some sort of a dispatching, I suppose, uh, some sort of a dispatching. So uh, I want to have functions like parse bang uh, string literal, parse bang uh, fun call, right? And depending on like these things, we're gonna try to parse them differently, I suppose. Um, so for now. If we hit any of these things, I want to throw an error, right? I want to throw an error, uh, something like f print f std error, uh, bang lock fmt uh, error, uh, no expression, no expression uh, starts with uh, and we need to provide the name of the token, right? We need to provide the name of the token. So here, bang log arg, and the location is going to be the location of the token, right? The location of the token. And here we're going to have a bang uh, token kind name. Um, and I'm going to sneeze, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Uh, token kind uh, and 
yeah, so that's essentially what we're going to report in here, and uh, then we're going to just exit with one. Um, so if we reached something like this, uh, we reached the unreachable state, we have to report that as well. So it's going to be assert false. Um, so this is going to be the function. Um, mm -hmm. eh, eh. Uh, by the way, does is there like does GCC has something like func uh, or something? And is this standard? function name um, mm, mm, mm. so there is a function um, is this standard well I do I'm pretty sure I have a pedantic enabled in my in my build uh, yeah I have a pedantic enabled so if it doesn't work it's it doesn't work all right so unreachable um, Oh boy, I lost everything. So let me try to recompile everything and see where it fails because it probably fails somewhere there. So bang talking, um, yeah, bang lexer pick. And I want to actually try something like this. Yeah, you cannot use function in assert because assert is actually kind of dumb. <laughs> assert doesn't even accept error messages. Oh my god. Okay, so um, uh, let's put it like this. Uh, and this is going to be something like unreachable. Uh, C, 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 C. Sozin, but why are you not using my favorite language? Uh, why are you still using C? If you're so unhappy with it oh, oh. all right so <clears throat> expression stats bang and reachable and uh, so yeah let's actually try to, to parse these things mm -hmm. okay so we have uh, arena mm, and we'll probably have to pass the arena to one of those things right we we'll have to pass to pass it to one of those things. Okay, so parse um, bang fun call. That's what we need to do. So I'm gonna provide the arena and the lexer. Uh, do I need to provide anything else in here? I'm not quite sure. So here's the thing. This thing will probably return a bang uh, fun call, right? It will return a bang fun call. And what I'll have to do, I'll have to create my own bang expression in here, right? So it's gonna be expression. Uh, that I'll have to return. So I'm going to zero initialize it and in expression I probably have to set up the kind. Um, so the kind is going to be bang expression uh, fun call, right? So this is going to be fun call and then here we're going to have a value as fun call and we're going to set it in here. There we go. And after that I can just return this entire expression like this, right? So as you can see, we picked into the token kind and we saw that, okay, it's a name. So that means let's actually try to parse it as a function call. Um, so the same thing is going to be here for, for the string literal. And we do need to parse string literal because string literals needs to be like, uh, we need to decode escape characters in there and so on and so forth. So yeah, we'll need to do something like that. Uh, okay, so let's do the similar thing. So it's gonna be bang expression, expression, uh, zero initialized. The expression kind is a bang expression kind uh, lit str and then value as lit string parse bang lit string. <laughs> Okay, uh, arena uh, lexa. There we go. And we're going to just return this expression. <laughs> there we go. So we need to implement these two functions. We need to implement these two functions. Okay, let's actually go through the compilation errors. Mm, all right. Parse bank phone call. Oh boy, oh boy. Where is my soy? Okay. Arena. So it's going to be that. Bang lexa. Bang Alexa, there we go. And this entire thing should probably return a bang fan call. Uh, okay, so this one is unimplemented. Uh -huh. To do is not implemented yet. And let's ignore all these things. Arena Alexa, and what do we have in here? Okay. Another one, uh, another one. 
Mm -hmm. So let's put it in here somewhere. Uh, static bang fun call. Fun call. Arena, arena, bang Alexa. Uh -huh. And the same stuff goes in here. Might as well copy paste this entire thing. Uh, and uh, this one is going to be the str. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. All right. All right. And this one, I suppose it has to return string. Yeah, I forgot to say that it's supposed to return a string view. Mm. Oh, by the way, recently I extracted my string view library into a separate repo. So I finally found time to to do that. So I would really recommend you to check out. It's actually it's actually pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to put that in the description if you're interested in this kind of thing. A string uh, view library. Right, it's a pretty small library. But, uh, I just found myself I keep copy pasting this library to all of my projects over and over again. So I think the time has come to actually extract that. All right. So uh, now we need to implement parse bang phone call. That's what we need to implement in here. Uh, two, 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 two. So how are we going to parse all of that? So phone call right now, as far as I can tell, uh, accepts only one argument, right? So maybe we're actually going to cheat a little bit and implement our parser supporting only one argument. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So uh, phone call. So what do we expect in here? Um, so it's going to be token, token, uh, Alexa, we need to expect a name. We need to expect a name, expect uh, token, right? So we provide Alexa, we provide Alexa and we provide the bang token uh, kind name, right? And we extract the text and uh, we should assign it to some sort of a name, right? And I think it would be nice to have something like bang fun call, fun call and zero initialize it right away and then return it at the end of the function, right? A fun call like this. Uh, and automatically assign name to this fun call. There we go. So, yeah, something like this. So here's the fun call. Uh, we expect a token uh, kind name. It's kind of similar to parsing the um, the procedure definition, uh, except you're parsing fun call. So and in here, uh, the next thing we should expect. Uh, the next thing we should we should expect is a token kind open parent, right? Open parent, and then we should expect an expression, right? At least for now. So um, this one is going to be rather interesting. Um, to, 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 it's going to be rather interesting because we need to append. Uh, we need to parse a parse function called arguments, and this one is a little bit painful to do, I suppose. Hmm. Maybe one of the things we can do is basically have a separate function for parsing uh, function call arguments, right? So, and in here we can do something like fun call args, bang, uh, parse, bang, fun call args, right? And we can just provide the Alexa uh, and probably the arena, right? Because it will definitely allocate the memory and just forget about this thing. Um, yeah, look, looks fine. Mm -hmm. So let's just delegate that to a separate function. So uh, this one is going to be something like this. So it's going to be static, uh, arena, then it's going to be a bang Alexa, bang Alexa, and this entire thing is going to return phone call args, uh, actually pointed to phone call args because it's a linked list. It's a linked list. All right, then we're returning null in here. Um, so let's just quickly implement that. So I suppose I'm going to just say expect lexer expect um, expect token. So it's going to be lexer bang token um, kind open parent, right? We expect open parent. Uh, and then we're going to expect, expect a close parent. Oh boy, and again, for now, we're going to just expect one argument for the function call because implementing this in a more generic way is will consume too much time. Uh, so let's just cheat a little bit. 
just a little bit for some CD. Uh, so what's going to be the result? I suppose uh, we can do something like fun call arg uh, result. Maybe initially it's going to be actually equal to null. There we go. It's initially equal to null. Then uh, I want to allocate some memory. I'm going to allocate some memory in the arena. Right. Um, so how much do I want to allocate? So I need to provide the arena itself and I'm going to uh, allocate as much as the as this thing. Right. And inside of this thing, we have a value. And what I need to do, I need to parse bang expression yet again. Uh, arena Alexa. Uh, and there we go. And I guess that's it. I guess that's it. So and after that, I can just return the result. And uh, there we go. We have a parse bank phone call args. And it only supports one single argument. And maybe because of that, I want to put it to do in here, uh, saying that this function does not um, only supports um, a single uh, argument, right? Only parses a single argument. So it's a temporary solution just to make things work for now. Just to make things work for now. And this one is probably not available. Uh, so let me actually forward declare this up there, uh, right? Because it's C. I wonder if I have to put static in here. That's actually a very good question. I'm going to try to put static in here and see what's, what's going to happen. Um, all right, so what do we have in here? Um, this thing, incompatible types from expression. Um, so, and the, oh, um, oh yeah, this one has to be bang phone call. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense now. All right, anything else? Uh, result. Uh, okay, so this thing has to be a pointer to the bank. Yeah, yeah, okay, I screwed it up, I see. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, we hit another assert, yes. Now we need to parse uh, string literal. Okay, so for now I'm gonna cheat yet again. And essentially, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna not try to even, I'm not gonna even try to, how to say that, how to say that to, even decode the uh, the string, right? I'm not gonna try to decode the string because uh, it will take like a lot of time. I'm gonna grab the whole string, uh, right? And just return it as the string literal. Um, so what we're gonna do in here, we need to provide the bang token, right? Bang token, and do that. Um, and I'm gonna say uh, bang, uh, and I need to find Alexa. Uh, so I'm gonna grab the, uh, maybe I'm gonna expect a particular kind, right? I'm gonna expect a particular kind, and because of that I can get rid of that, right? So it's gonna be token, provide the lexa. The, uh, the kind that we expect in here is um, string lit str, right? There we go. So we know for sure that, it, that this is a string uh, LTR, but the problem with these string literals is that they start and end with quotes. For some reason, our tokenizer includes quotes as well. The question is, why? <laughs> um, yeah, because if the tokenizer didn't include the quotes, uh, we could just return token like that and don't worry about anything and maybe even compress this entire thing into a single expression like this. That would be kind of epic, not gonna lie. And uh, let's actually probably go into our tokenizer and teach it how to properly return string literals. God damn it. Okay, uh, so let me see. It's gonna be Alexa. Uh, expect Alexa token. Let me see. So this is gonna be that. And. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, we need to go into the peak, I suppose. Bang, Lexa, peak. There we go. Uh, check peak. Uh, check peak. String literal. There you go. There you go. Here it is. Eh. Maybe it would be actually easier. So, uh, 
Yeah, let's actually leave it as it is. So I think it's gonna be responsibility of, um, you know, of the parser to extract those things. So this is gonna be the result. Maybe lead str, uh, lead str, and I probably just need to chop a couple of things from the ends, right? Uh, so in SV, as far as I know, SV.h, uh, we have a bunch of things in here, like chop left and chop right, right. And if this is a correct string literal, uh, the smallest string literal we can get is a couple of parentheses. So that means there is a very important assertion in here that uh, the size of the string literal is um, at least two characters. If it's less than two characters, that means the tokenizer has a bug. Because if this thing is string literal, the smallest one is going to be two bytes, two characters. This is quite important because the next code is going to uh, depend on this thing. So we're going to chop uh, left. Right. We're going to chop left uh, lit str one character. We're chopping off uh, one character from the left, removing first quote, and then we're chopping uh, the character from the, uh, from the right, another quote. And by the way, speaking of I'm using functions from my string view library. So yeah, uh, this kind of stuff is like enabled by this library. Check it out. It's in the description. It's called SV string view. Uh, it's basically like implementation of a C++ concept string view, but it's not really invented by C++. We had this kind of things for a while in different languages. Like it, um, it's a maybe specialized version of Rust slice. Uh, I don't know. So the idea, the idea of grouping together pointer to the beginning of the sequence and the size of the sequence is not new this is a very old idea right so yeah that that's basically what string view is uh, nothing particularly special and it also implements a bunch of functions uh, to operate on these string views uh, without copying them like precisely only on string views check it out it's in the description all right, so we're chopping off these things, and after that, we basically returning this entire thing. So we're turning string lead, lead str, and that function should be now successfully implemented. And let's see what we got. Uh, let's see what we got. So we have bang lexer uh, called object is not a function, and excuse me, I see if I got a semicolon. Nice compilation error. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we didn't use arena in here apparently, but we will use it uh, once we implement decoding of the uh, of the of the string literals. All right, another one. The next function: implement expect arity. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So expect a particular arity should be pretty straightforward, right? Um, so what we need to do in here, we need to take the uh, arguments, right? So it's going to be uh, bang fun call args, uh, right? So this is going to be just args, and um, <clears throat> while args not equal null, we're going to be iterating them, right? Uh, we're going to be iterating them until we uh, reach the end of this linked list, and while we are iterating them. Uh, we are going to be uh, decrementing the arity variable. We're going to be decrementing it by one, and we're going to keep doing that uh, while arity, expected arity, is greater than zero. Okay, so after that, right, after that, if arguments is equal to null, but arity is greater than zero, that means we have less arguments that expected. If Arguments is not equal to null, but arity is greater than zero. That means uh, uh, we have less arguments than expected, or the other way around. In any case, uh, what we need to do in here, we need to check that args is equal to null and arity is equal to null. Right? Both of these things are equal to null. If uh, some of them are not, well, uh, and yeah, since it's a function expect that returns void, that means it has to report the error itself. Okay, so let's report the error. Um, so the question is, to report an error, we need to know the location of this 
function. We need to know the location of this function. Uh, so where can we provide the location? Um, so I suppose we can put the location bang uh, lock in here. So this is where it starts. This is where the function call is happening. Um, so, and we need to actually find all the places where we construct bang fun call um, and update this kind of stuff, which probably means that we need to create like a um, constructor function, uh, if that makes any sense. Constructor functions, because eh, eh, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, let me go back to uh, original thing. Uh, right. And in here, what we need to print in here is that. Uh, sorry, if. Uh, um, uh, expected um, mm, mm, mm. let me think um, function <clears throat> oh and we're also losing the uh, losing the original arity that was a dumb idea <laughs> uh, Okay, this 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 entire thing is dumb idea because we're losing the original value and we need the original value because we need to report it. Ah, uh, okay, so I'll need to rewrite this thing. <laughs> Goddamn classic. All right, so let's just count the the arity in here. So this one is going to be expected arity, All right? And we're going to have something like actual arity. Actual arity is going to be initially zero. We can put this entire stuff into this thing, sure. And uh, we're going to be iterating this entire stuff. Actual arity plus one. There we go. Uh, so after that, if expected arity not equal to the actual arity, uh, function uh, svfmt the function svfmt expects expects this amount uh, this amount of arguments but provided this and that's the error that's the error so we also have to provide the location where that happened bang uh, lock fmt bang lock fmt uh, and uh, what we're gonna have in here is bang lock arg, All right? And we know the location of the function call because it's inside of the function call. Fun call, um, it's by pointer? It's not a pointer, why did they provide a pointer in here? Uh, so, uh, lock, right, here's the location. Then we have to provide the name of the fun call, right? So this is going to be the function name. Um, then uh, we are going to provide expected arity and then actual arity. And after that, we're going to basically return from this entire thing. So that's what we are doing in here. That's what we're doing. We're just reporting this error appropriately, more or less, at least trying to. All right, so, and, uh, did it just fucking work? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I, th I, th I think it just worked. <laughs> All right. Did did our process actually work? Okay. So we don't really have any compilation errors in here, do we? Uh, so if I provide, or if I break the code, uh, will it actually complain about this thing? It did. Expected token bank token kind semicolon, but got bank token kind name. My God. Oh shit. This is actually kind of cool. Right. And it reported it in a very strange place. It reported it in a very strange place. Well, I mean, now I understand why the compilers actually report that on the next line. <laughs> uh, now I understand that because it basically like expects it in here, right? But it's actually, ah, uh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I wonder if we can do something about that. I wonder if we can. Mm -hmm. um, probably not, but now it actually can complain about these things. And here's the problem, by the way. Uh, I said that we're not handling 
um, the escapes. What we do need escapes for the um, for the new line in here. Otherwise, it's going to look really awkward, right? I presume that it generated the final executable in here. So let's actually try to run it one more time. And uh, it's going to be something like toolchain, bang, example, uh, hello, bang, and it generated the executable. Okay, cool. Uh, it generated all of that with our new parser, with our new tokenizer. And what we had to do, we just had to follow the process. You see, the compiler assisted refactoring works. And you just basically refactor things pretty much the first try without any IDEs or anything like that. The compiler becomes the IDE. Amazing, right? So you just follow the compilation errors and you just reach there. You know? This kind of stuff is really difficult to do with dynamic languages, but I mean, uh, even dynamic language people start to realize that. So JavaScript got TypeScript, Python got uh, typed Python, and so on and so forth. All of these dynamic languages suddenly realize, oh yeah, static typing is a good idea. It's an idea from 70s. And yeah, finally, maybe we need to integrate idea of 70s into the modern language. Mm. I'm pretty sure the idea of static typing like even like precedes 70s, yeah, maybe 60s or something. Um, our goal is like 68, 69 or something. And it's statically typed as far as I know. Is our goal static to type? I don't remember. Uh, family of imperative compi com imperative computer programming language. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Computer programming language. So there are programming languages that are not for computers. I guess it depends on the definition. That's a huge F, my guts. <laughs> you like that. Uh, so does it have a static typing? What, what, what typing? Static and strong. Strong independent typing. All right. So uh, let me see. Let's actually try to run this thing. Uh, it's going to be tool chain BME and it's going to be hello BM and uh we don't have a bme okay let's actually try to build bme super quick and maybe i actually did a fucky wacky and oopsie doopsie there we go so that's the problem you see we don't decode the string literals and this is what we got this is what we essentially got uh maybe we need to quickly implement that uh so parse bang lead str um so let me see maybe i can steal some code from the legacy parser can i steal some code from the legacy parser i should be able to uh so i think it's an escape yeah oh sh i even ha okay that's actually pretty cool uh we literally have like a function that tries to unescape things um maybe i'm gonna just ewing this entire stuff i'm gonna literally ewing it uh i'm gonna put it in here all right and what we do in here is that uh we're just iterating through this entire thing and we're also allocating this entire stuff so unescape bang string literal Hmm. Maybe, like, the problem with this thing is that... Um, unknown escape character. Uh, yeah, let's call it an escape. Bang. String uh, And this thing... Yeah, let's just use it. Uh, we're not going to have a file location. Uh, the only thing it needs is a string literal. Uh, all right, and let's just put this stuff in here. Uh huh. So it's going to be a lead str, and I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure it needs the arena, right? So let's also provide the arena like this, and hopefully that will work. Okay. We'll also have to go through the compilation errors, of course. It's not as easy uh, as it may look. So let's rebuild everything. All right, what do we got? Uh, uh, so this is has to be a static. This has to be a static. Ecstatic. Uh, so we are trying to provide the location, but all right. 
so that was the problem that was my problem with this kind of thing like we need to know the location and to know the location we have to pass the location or something like that and I just don't want to overcomplicate this function. So this function need to indicate like what happened. You 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 have two kinds of errors in here: unfinished string literal uh, sequence and unknown escape characters. And you need to report them somehow. Uh, and reporting is right now is responsibility of this entire function. So I don't even know. I don't even know. So maybe we can. I don't know. Um. It could like return what exactly happened, like and like either unfinished or not, and it could be something like um, unescape uh, result, right? Unescape result and maybe unescape status. Then here is going to be the input, and the output output is going to be actually something like this. And it's like it's so cucumbersome for what it's doing. Like I just I don't want to do that. It's easy to report the errors within this function why this function is so stubborn yes that's what it is this function is extremely stubborn it doesn't want to be separated from the way it reports errors mm. well i mean you kind of do you can you can kind of do that but it's just mm. well one of the things we can do in here is um, uh maybe just basically copy paste it inside of here because maybe unescaping is part of the parsing function so maybe that's why it doesn't want to like go away maybe that's the reason let's give it a try all right so um str lit um it's actually <laughs> str lit lit str let's call it lit str okay, place str lit uh, lit str Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so what do we got? Anything else? Uh, anything else? And here is the thing. And the location, we do have the location in the token. Right, so that means we need to uh, save the token somehow. Bang, token. Uh, and let's put it in here somehow. So this is the bang token. Uh, right, so then we have a str, it's going to be talking str, and then we're chopping off everything that is not in it in here, and that should be all right. That should be essentially all right. And the location in here is going to be bang uh, lock fmt, and this one is has to be uh, bang lock arg, and then we take the token that if I go to give the name to, right, it's going to be something like this, uh, right, and I go in here, uh, token lock, token lock, so unfinished string literal sequence, oh, this one is goddamn interesting, you know why, because we want to actually report it precisely inside of the string, so that means we need to construct a new location with the updated column. That's right. So we need to take uh, a lock column and add i in here to the column. That's what we need to do. All right. So let me let me try to do that. So we're gonna have a new location. Bang, lock. Um, how are we gonna call it? Mm, let's call it just lock. And it's going to be token uh, lock. Uh, and in here, lock column is going to be literally plus i. And then we're just going to put it like lock in here. So here's the new location with the updated column. Okay. Uh, is that generally a good idea? Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. We'll see. Uh, another one. So I think it's kind of a similar situation in here. I think it's kind of similar situation. Uh, we also want to report this stuff in here so it's going to be bang uh, lock fmt here's a bang log fmt then we use bang lock arg with the new location uh, <laughs> i really like this like lock call um, <laughs> it's a palindrome right 
it's a palindrome. Uh, so, and then we just provide this thing in here and everything seems to be more or less good. And it's working. Nice. All right, so uh, can I now, uh, if I try to run this program, right, it should have proper new lines. Um, okay. Uh, so let me rebuild BME. Wait, 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 wait. When I'm rebuilding things, I might as well actually do something like this. That's the BME, All right? And then I can do build to chain uh, BME, uh, and it's gonna be hello BM, All right? Okay. So as you can see, everything is escaped correctly. Uh, everything is escaped correctly and we can try to do something interesting in here for instance um, we can have an unfinished escape sequence if I put it like that I think it's not gonna work properly and I think it's gonna generate an error and there we go unfinished string literal escape sequence and it actually points at like yeah it doesn't really point precisely maybe it has to be like plus one uh, to, to point precisely. Let's actually give it a try. So I'm going to go to the bang uh, and in here maybe it has to be plus one and another one is going to be also plus one. Um, mm -hmm. All right and yeah that's that's what it is. That's what it is. We can also try to escape with something that doesn't exist like Q and let's see what's going to happen. Uh, a known character Q and it just points precisely. It points precisely kind of like that. Um, actually, in here, it has to be plus two. Yeah, maybe this one has to be actually plus two for the character. All right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I really like that. I like that. So it reports everything correctly. It reports all of the problems and stuff like that. Uh huh. Mm. All right. Uh, I'm, am I not in correct place? Yes, I am not. One more time. Cool. So, and if I have some like stuff in here, if I have some errors, it always tells me uh, bank token kind uh, close parent, but got. Okay, that's cool. Mm, let's go, let's go, let's go. So to be fair, I don't like these clunky error messages. I think they're dumb. <laughs> I think they're kind of dumb. Uh, I want to actually change them slightly. Um, right. So, but they all come from this thing, right? They all come from the, from this thing. Um, we can try to ch change that. So maybe it's going to be just a name then this one is going to be open parent uh close parent uh open curly close curly uh semicolon uh string literal string literal curly. so uh we also of course need to rebuild everything so it's going to be no build tools bank bme uh, let's rebuild bank bme and now in hello, um, if I do something like this, hopefully it will do the trick. Expected that, but got that. Okay, that's that's a pretty good error message. Look at that. <laughs> that's actually a goddamn good error message. It's already better than GCC. <laughs> I don't know, is it? Uh, if you try to do something in GCC, something like that, right? So is it going to tell you... Uh, if we, if you did something incorrectly, right? So if you do gcc main.c, uh, so expected declarative specifier blah blah blah. No, it said you nothing. But here our compiler actually tells you useful shit. Look at that. Uh, just a second. There we go. Yeah, expected that, but got that, and now you know that you need to fix that. There we go. Uh, can I put some variables in here? I, I probably cannot because we don't even parse them yet, but at some point we will. Look at that! My gut! And just to show that it actually does what it, you know it's supposed to do, I'm going to just change these things. This one is going to be hello world. As you can see, it does everything correctly. 
Um, all right. We can try to change the functions. I think it will also uh, throw a compilation error. Oh, okay. So we, in the compiler itself, not in the parser or tokenizer, we use uh, we use assert to report errors, which is not particularly great idea, as you can see. So what we want to do instead, I think, we want to uh, say we want to report like a proper place. Let's quickly do that. So it's going to be std error, uh, bang, um, lock fmt. It's going to be error um, unknown function, and we can even say the name of that unknown function. Uh, shouldn't be too hard bang lock arg there we go and what is the location so we do know the location of the function call we do know it so i'm gonna just provide the lock in here and then svfmt the same thing uh, i'm gonna be providing the um the name of the function call there we go should we register forward and then we just exit with one and no more asserts here assert is needed because it's an unreachable state uh, but here it would be better to actually report it properly uh, so let's rebuild everything it's going to be no build uh, tools bme bang and there we go there we go and it doesn't compile because I'm a, I'm a dummy even. Why am I such a dummy? My God. All right. So, no. Yes. Thank you very much. Very cool. Uh, I wonder. Okay. So does it, does it redirect anywhere? All right. <laughs> this is because when I'm parsing the function call, I forgot to set up its location. Yikes, yikes, bang, bang, phone call. All right, so let's try to find it. Bang, phone call, uh, all right, all right. So here, what we're doing here, and then phone call. Oh, this one is interesting because the location for this thing is located in this token. All right, token, uh, token, we'll have to put it like that. This one is gonna be token. Then uh, location is gonna be token location, there we go. So that should be it, essentially. Uh, excuse me. It's a bang token. All right. Sure. And look at that. Unknown function foo. I click on it and I'm redirected precisely to here. Beautiful. So, yeah, if you're not white, write English. What the hell is wrong with my English? All right, everything seems to be working, and uh, we have finally proper compilation errors. <laughs> yeah, so but we had to completely separate tokenizer and parser, but I think at the end of the day, that was worth it. My god, that was worth it. Uh, okay, let's actually make a, a pull request real quick. So I'm not going to include these things. Um, so another thing it would be nice to have is to extract the parser into separate uh, into separate translation unit, uh, just like a lexer, but I think I'm going to do that a little bit later. Um, all right, so uh, bang lexer integration, integration, there we go. And uh, let's compile all of that, I mean commit all of that. Integrate bang lexer into the compiler that's right and let's push that right into the repo right and uh, let me see let me see uh, eh, eh, eh. okay uh let's go to pull request integrate bang lexer into the compiler all right so we're gonna wait for continuous integration and stuff like that and i guess that is it for today boys and girls that is it thanks everyone who's watching me right now i really really appreciate it have a good one and i see you all tomorrow tomorrow according to the schedule we're going to be working on our own http library in c that's right we're going to be working on that and i guess i see you all tomorrow i see you all tomorrow thanks everyone for watching love you all. Mwah.